low. Time to go another level past overflow. We gon' do the most, overthrow the comatose. Raise it up till the vibe reach Holy Ghost. Yeah, this a lift off energy. Gotta date with destiny as she feelin' my chemistry. Manifestation, dreams to delivery. Mind over matter, faith over disbelief. from Tampa, West Point, New York, and Shea Stadium. It's the site of senior night for Army West Point sprint football as the Army West Point Black Knights host the St. Thomas Aquinas College Spartans in uh, this collegiate sprint football matchup. Alongside Caleb Self, I'm Justin Rock. Caleb, you were down there on the field for the senior night festivities just a few moments ago with your friends and family. What was it like down there outside the fact that it was extremely damp. Uh, you know, it's a you know it's a super special moment for everyone that's a p involved with the team, whether you're a coach or a player or a manager. And you know, to be recognized for all the hard work over the last four years is it's definitely something we'll remember for a long time. St. Thomas Aquinas has won uh, the opening coin toss and has elected to receive uh, the game's opening at kickoff. So Army will kick it away. Army at 4-0, and coming off a 63-0 thrashing of Cornell last weekend on the road. As for St. Thomas Aquinas, a four-point loss on the road last week against Penn. They are at 2-2. Two and two. Alex Pierrot will kick things off uh, for West Point. And amidst the rain, and when the, it is time for football on this Friday night, the lefties kick it is on its way. Fielded right at about the 20-yard line by Nair Jones. And a great return out across my midfield and finally brought down shy of the Army 40-yard line. So Nair Jones been one of the star players on St. Thomas Aquinas' offense so far this year. And the Spartans' excellent field position to start the ball game. Yeah, they have tons of weapons, especially on kickoff. They returned a touchdown against Navy in the first game of the season, and so they're, they have weapons all over the field, and that doesn't mean, you know, you get to take a playoff on special teams. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas led by their junior quarterback from Brooklyn, Ryan Kenny, coming into play today, leading uh, the CSFL in passing yards and touchdowns. Five receivers set to start. Three receivers to the near side. Kenny back to pass, rolling out near side, not looking to run pass, tipped over the middle and complete. It was the senior captain, Luke Gelati, who got a hand on it, looked to get it to Elio Nexus Lopez, the senior from the Bronx. Great play there by Gelati, and you know, Kenny has to be careful throwing a ball late over the middle like that. He's lucky it wasn't intercepted. There wasn't many options available. A quarterback that Coach Mark West said earlier this week, Generally not somebody that's looking to put the ball down and run. Two receivers bunched either side. Kenny back to pass, throws near side, making the catch is Philip Meikle, and he's able to make a man miss and get out near the 30-yard line a couple yards short, out at about the 32, and it'll be a, a chunk gain on that play. Should be third and medium coming up for St. Thomas Aquinas. Look for both teams to either keep the ball on the ground or throw short passes to avoid, you know, the elements affecting the longer deep balls and provide more opportunities for interceptions. Third down and five for the Spartans. Ball spotted at the Army 31. St. Thomas Aquinas 33% for the year on third down coming into play today. Army giving up just 20% on third down this year. Back to pass is Kenny. Under pressure, flings it out far side. Tipped up by Carse, and it's intercepted. It's the senior, Denisio, who comes up with the interception, and the Black Knights start senior night with a turnover. Great play there by Denisio. You know he's in the right place at the right time, catches the tip, returns it a few yards, and, you know, that's the danger when you're playing games like these. If you're going to air the ball, you have to be extremely careful that that doesn't happen. And what a time for the senior to pick up his first career interception on senior night. The native of Verona, New Jersey. That's the second tip ball Army had defensively on that drive. Kenny's been so good this year, but a well-played first drive.
five for the defense. Yeah, Kenny hasn't played Army yet, so we'll see. We have the number one passing defense in the league, so we'll see how he fares against us. Well, here is the reigning uh, league player, offensive player of the week, Mikhail Willicky. Comes out with a man in his sidecar to his left. Two receivers far side to his right. He'll flip it out to Ryan Connors coming off a strong week last week. And the tackle spins him forward a couple of yards. And a good start for Army on the ground as Connors picks up a chunk. Yeah, just a blast play to the left side. Gains six or seven yards. Good way to start for Army. And Connors, three catches, 54 yards last week in the 63-0 win against Cornell. Willicke throws over the middle and that pass short. And luckily, Ed, that ball was a little bit short as Sean Bernard, the cornerback, had a good read on it. Yeah, you can see on the screen here, it is, it's is—it's coming down pretty good, and we, we can even hear it here in the booth. And I don't, even, I don't know if that ball was overthrown of Balan or short of Simeon. It looked like it was in between the two. Right now, it's temperature in the low 60s right now at West Point, and a, a whistle right before the snap. It'll be a false start on Army. That'll be the first penalty on either side tonight. And the Black Knights will be backed up to third down and nine back at their own 38-yard line. And the rain continuing to pick up in intensity really over the course of the last half an hour. Right about the time the senior night festivities were beginning to get underway, Willicke asks for the snap, and there was plenty of movement at the line. Who jumped first? Yeah, they just got the yards back that they just lost. And so look to be uh, encroachment on uh, the St. Thomas Aquinas defensive line. So penalties on back-to-back -back plays and right back to where we started, third and four at the Army 43. Connors lined up to the left of Willicke. Lomanac and Simeon out to the far side. It's the long side of the field set up on the left hash mark. Rain continuing to pick up. Handoff up the middle for Connors, flipping off a couple of wet tacklers. And finally brought down right near midfield. Looked like John Perry made the stop. And it'll be fourth down. Or no, it'll be first down. The Scoreboard out <laughs> to the right side of us. A little bit delayed there, but a handoff to Ryan Connors quickly on first down and 10. And Perry makes another quick stop. So Connors, a couple of good gains on the ground. And Army right now may be trying to focus on the ground game with the torrential downpour right now at Shea Stadium. Yeah, they're just pounding the middle, and it's working so far. You know, there's two to three defensive lineman holes just right in the middle there about three guys long and he's just hitting it right in the middle there and gaining some good yards army coming into play today averaging over 163 yards a game on the ground connor's to the right of willicky two receivers on either side of the formation they hand it off to connor's off tackle left tries to slip his way through and is upended right at about the 40 yard line and another good chunk there for Connors. And it should be close to the first down marker. And it will be a first down for Army. Yeah, if I'm Army right now, I'm sticking to what's working. I'm, uh, I'm running the ball until they can prove they can stop it. Willicke again in the shotgun as the rain continues to fall heavily. Another handoff, Connors left. Plenty of room on that side of the gridiron. Try to slip past one more tackler and finally chipped down by about the 20-yard line. Great blocking on the near side by the Army offensive line. Yeah, the dirt pickers are doing a great job up front so far. Connors isn't even getting touched until six or seven yards down the field. Now, clearly not until he's into the second level of the St. Thomas Aquinas defense. Again, it's Connors left side. A flag is thrown. Connors down out near the 10 yard line, but we'll see what the whistle is as a St. Thomas Aquinas player down by about the 20. And it looks like whatever the infraction is, it'll be against the Black Knights. I haven't seen the official signal from uh, one of the officials. I have to imagine, based on where the flag was thrown, it was in the vicinity of holding. Yep. And that will back Army up the first down at 20. Ball spotted at about their 28-yard line. Willicke again in shotgun. They hand it off to Connors up the middle, and this time the Spartan defensive line was ready for it. 
Yeah, they sniffed that one out pretty quick. I, th I think the new army is going to run out the gut again. As we said, they couldn't stop it thus far, but good job there by the defensive line making a minimal gain. Good stop on the defensive line by Kyle Marsha, the native of Buffalo. So second down and 19 for the Black Knights. Ball at the stack, 27. Willicky throws it deep over the middle, looking for a man. He's got the senior Ballon for a touchdown. Ballon leaked out over the middle for six, but uh, the penalty was called on St. Thomas Aquinas. It'll be declined, and Ballon from Willicky for six, and Army strikes first, even with the torrential weather. Yeah, great route there by Ballon. He kind of just outruns the safety. It's a seam route that turns into more of a fade at the end, and a great ball by Willicky to finish it off and, you know, Army's up 6 nothing. First career sprint touchdown for Maurice Ballon on a drive that started on the first career interception by another senior, Denisio. So P. Ryan uh, will try the extra point. Matthew Tilly, the man to hold. And P. Ryan's kick up, and it is good. And Army West Point marches down the field on their opening drive, despite the holding call, end up in the end zone and take a 7 to nothing lead with 10.41 to go here in the first. Yeah, you know, it's similar to what we talked about against Navy. When you run so many plays of the same variety in a row, the defense, you know, inevitably is going to squeeze in and get closer to the line of scrimmage, even the defensive backs. And when you do that so many plays in a row, it sets up the long ball, which we saw there even in the weather. And Mc Mikhail Willicke, his seventh touchdown pass of the season. And for Ballon, his first touchdown catch of the campaign. An outstanding route, honestly set up by all the run plays that Army were able to succeed on to get them on that side of the 50. So Pirino will let it fly for Army over towards the near side over the head of the return man and into the end zone uh, for a touchback and so uh, the spartans will start their second drive first down at 10 at their own uh, 25 yard line uh, caleb after uh, the great kickoff return by jones uh, on the last possession army defense excellent job limiting what the spartans could do on that first possession yeah you know it's a bend don't break mentality and um even if you give up a play like that to start the drive off the, straight off the kickoff, being able to you know buckle down and not even give up a first down and then have two pass breakups, one of them turns into an interception, is just a testament to you know what this defense is as a unit. So Kenny will come out under shotgun for St. Thomas Aquinas. Bo Maroney is the running back at, to his right. He'll take the snap. Handoff goes to Maroney up the middle. And James Windsor quickly there to meet him as he makes the stop. Denisio was there as well. And the Jersey native making an impact early, an interception, and a tackle for loss. Yeah, it's just a simple GT play there by Stack. You see the guard and the tackle both pull. Denisio gets under the pole and um, hits him in the backfield or right at the line of scrimmage for, you know, a great play. We'll see how this weather will impact Kenny. As you mentioned, has aired it out so far this year, leading the league in passing yards and touchdowns and came into play today, tied with Willicke for the fewest interceptions in the league. He's under pressure. Hit as he throws and incomplete. Over the head of his intended target, that was Elio Nexus Lopez. And it'll be third down and long upcoming for the Spartans just inside 10 minutes to go in the first quarter. Yeah, you see Army bring pressure there, and it pays off. Um, Kenny wasn't ready for it this first time they brought pressure all night and he has to get rid of it to avoid a sack well, army has done a good job forcing kenny to hold the ball in the pocket outstanding coverage on either side uh, on the defensive backs so kenny again in shotgun takes the snap looks near side and the pass looked to be floated out there towards nair jones makes the catch question is does he have enough for the first down it appear he does and st thomas aquinas will move the chains for the first time today yeah potential miscommunication on the coverage there could have been a prevent coverage with the, um third and long but he just runs a stop route on the sideline and yeah you're right even though the ball floats there's no one there in time to, you know, knock it down. The way it floated out of his hands, I thought it might have been tipped, but may have just slipped considering the wet conditions here uh, at West Point. Again, Maroney to his left. Kenny back to pass under a ton of pressure. Gets away from Denisio. Rolls out near side. Throws it towards the sideline. Did uh, the catch be made? Yes, it was along the near side. Again, it's Nair Jones. 
I mean, minimal gain on the play will be second and long. He is very fortunate that that was not a sack. He didn't even see Dionisio until, you know, he basically made contact with him, ducks under, and extends the play. Excellent pressure off the near side from Dionisio, who has been everywhere to start for Army defensively. Rain continuing to pick up in intensity as this first quarter rolls along. Bunch receivers to the near side. Kenny back to pass. Hit as he's about to throw. Ball is loose. Who's got it? That's the question. It's Army football. It's a strip sack. Another senior in impact. Michael Sullivan comes away with the fumble recovery. Yeah, St. Thomas Aquinas doesn't have a good track record with fumbles. That's now their 10th of the year and the 7th by Kenny, I believe. And, you know, in this weather, if you're not going to take care of the ball, you might as well just get back on the bus. And an excellent play off the edge that time. James Windsor looked like to be the man that got to the quarterback first before the ball was recovered. And the Black Knights, another big play. Two drives for St. Thomas Aquinas, two turnovers for the Black Knight defense. Yeah, you know, that's been a point of emphasis throughout practice. The last couple of weeks, we want to force more turnovers, and you're seeing, you know, the product of that so far. And I want to say, as a handoff to Henry, back up the middle, his first touch of uh, the evening. And he'll pick up maybe a yard or two on the play. His second down upcoming for the Black Knights. But you look back, you mentioned that Navy game at Mikey Stadium a couple of weeks ago. It might be four straight offense or defensive possessions for Army at home in which they've turned their opponent over. As Beck, plenty of room along the left side, gets table topped out across the 25-yard line. But an excellent run for Beck and a first down for the Black Knights. Yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. Um, we have been forcing a lot of turnovers recently, especially at home, and that's a huge bonus when, when you're in control of the turnover margin. Things usually turn out well. An excellent job. Brendan Tierney had a big interception against Navy. Weber Carse had a big play off a of deflection. And of course, no one can forget the big hit that Jonathan Abrahams laid on Kai Sasaki on that final possession for Navy to really put the exclamation point on a star victory. Willicky back to pass, throws deep left side, tipped up in the air and incomplete. A dangerous throw into double, maybe triple coverage looking for Maurice Ballon. And it'll be second down for Army by the St. Thomas Aquinas 21-yard line. If I'm not mistaken, it looked like Willicky thought he may have had a free play there. It looked like a few of the defensive linemen jumped and he threw it up to Ballon. Still almost a touchdown, but um, no flag by the referee. Here's Milan and the touchdown grab on Army's opening drive to give them a 7-0 lead. Second down and 10. I ended up. Yeah, they called it now. And it was indeed a free play there. And so um, an early jump from uh, the stack line. So it'll be first down and five at the 16. Beck running right, tries to cut himself back inside by the 10-yard line. And just inside the 10, a good chunk for Army. And should be another first down. Great job by the offensive line. Uh, Lamanak even comes in with a crack steel block there and opens a big hole for Beck to go through. Army first down and goal at the St. Thomas Aquinas eight-yard line. Willicky handoff up the middle for Beck. Jukes a man trying to push himself forward, and he'll be about a yard or so shy of the end zone. And it'll be second down and goal for Army. You see if Army wants to stick on the ground here or try something in the air. If I'm them, I'm, I'm giving it to Beck again. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And Willicky will give the handoff to Beck, and he actually Willicky keeps it, trying to push himself forward towards the end zone, and he's in there for six, I do believe. Or no, he's marked down just shy. Yeah, just inside zone there. Um, defensive end comes crashing down on Beck, and Willicky comes up just short. So the third down and goal for Army at about the one-inch line. Willicky in shotgun, Beck to his right. Willicky takes the snap, but somebody jumped early on either side of the line yeah i mean both of stacks middle linebackers are walked all the way up into the a gaps right on the line of scrimmage and you know you know they're coming so the the edges could be more open um we'll see what what army wants to do here it look like the penalty on st thomas aquinas so maybe move the uh, the ball up maybe a eyelash or two and it'll be third down and goal once again uh, from uh, the one inch line Back to the left of Willicky. Simeon out, single to the far side. Willicky takes the snap, handoff back up the middle, and he is going to be short. 
Marked down just shy of the goal line. And it'll be fourth down upcoming for the Black Knights at about the one. It's not hard to run the ball when they're in their base defense, but when you have six guys walk down the line of scrimmage all attacking one or two offensive linemen, it's pretty tough to run right behind that. So we'll see what happens here. Army lost a couple on that last play. So it'll be fourth down and goal from uh, the stack three. Willicky takes the snap, hand off to Beck, but whistles as the ball was hiked. It's like a false start. And it'll be a false start on Army, and that'll back him up another five. And this time, Mark West will send out the special teams unit to try a field goal. So back him up to the eight-yard line, fourth down and goal for Army. And this will be about a 25-yard field goal attempt from the far hash. You know, Army's going to be pretty disappointed with that. Pretty much fall this drive all the way down the field and then get stuffed within the five-yard line. And Pirine, two of five on field goal tries this year. We'll try this one from the far side, Tilly to hole. Snap down, kick on its way, end over end, and it is good. So Alex Pirine knocks home a 25-yard field goal, and Army West Point takes a 10-0 lead with 5.36 to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, even though they didn't punch it in, you know, you're always going to take points no matter what. And as well, as long as the defense keeps playing the way they are, um, you know, you'll take points every single time. Just a disappointing finish to the drive there. And certainly with the way Army's defense has played this year, double-digit scoring generally is a safe point to be if you're the Army offense coming into play tonight. Black Knight defense giving up an average of four points a game. No, that is not a misprint. The season high against Army was seven. That was uh, the contest played here at Shea against Penn on Friday, September the 29th. So this Army defense has been as good as anyone in the league. And honestly, with the way things have gone through the first four plus games, have an opportunity over these final couple of weeks to maybe be historic in terms of the CSFL. Yeah, you know, like I've mentioned before, Coach Sessa, points and yards are personal and so it's a mindset and it's a culture that we bring every single day. Jones will receive it from about the 10 yard line. One on one and a great job holding his ground. JD Sparks on the coverage, able to make the tackle on Jones who had a marvelous return. The first play of the game for the Spartans. Yeah, just textbook breakdown and shimmy there by Sparks. You know, it's hard to juke when he's just sitting there waiting on you as, as opposed to running all the way down the field at full speed. And he's somebody that you've talked about a bunch throughout the course of this season. Somebody Mark West has talked glowingly about. Part of the youth wave in the defensive secondary for the Black Knights. So St. Thomas Aquinas will start the drive at their own 22. Two drives, two turnovers on interception and a sack fumble. Kenny will take the snap and a handoff up the middle. And it's just a massive humanity. Right at about the 20-yard line. Yeah, just nowhere to go. I don't even know if they called pinch there, but it looked like a pinch on the defensive line. It just collapsed on the running back there. St. Thomas Aquinas has struggled getting the ball going forward through the air. I got two men in the backfield. Solero motions out far side. Maroney to Kenny's right. Takes the snap. Kenny back to pass. Flings it out far side and incomplete. Yeah, I don't, there's not a whole lot to say there. Um, just missed the throw. Trying to get it in the direction of the halfback Solero out of Belmore, New York. Looked like Weber Carse on the coverage out of the backfield. And St. Thomas Aquinas again, third down and long. Back at their own 21-yard line. And Army trying to keep the Spartan offense deep within their own territory and set up their offense well in the final minutes of the first period. Kenny takes the snap under pressure, throws it back over to the far side, Solero. Luke Gelati quickly jumps on it for the tackle and should be well short of the first down marker. Slow screen there from Stack and Gig sniffed it out immediately, ran down, made a great tackle, and you know, Stack's me forced to punt. Luke Gelati has been uh, as good as any at the linebacker position since he came on campus at West Point. You've had a chance to battle with him and play with him throughout the course of your college career. What makes him such a special talent? Uh, number one, he's super tough. Um, he's not a guy you want to face in the hole, that's for sure. And he's actually more than a lot of our teammates and 
you know, we joke with him, but he's actually a really smart football player. And besides that, I think it's just instincts. He always seems to find the ball. Always like to see that from your defensive captain, a guy who can know what, where he needs to be at all times and also knows where the other 10 players on the field need to be at all times as well. So St. Thomas Aquinas will punt it away. This one uh, flaring off the leg of uh, Seif Sammy, not their normal punter. And this will take a last second Spartan bounce to the Army side of the 50 and will be touched down there at about the Army 46 yard line. Yeah, Seif Sammy was the man who punted it away there. Normally this year it had been Jaden Bennerman who last year led the league in punting average. But Bennerman not on the field there in Army with good field position to start their third drive. Yeah, you never know what can happen. It seems like, you know, the Army team switches kickers and punters every week, so who knows what's going on over there. And Bennerman's also been a big asset for the Spartans as a wideout two weeks ago was the CSFL Offensive Player of the Week. And a non-factor on offense today may not be available for the Spartans. As Willicky hand off to Arthur Lavalle, and he's just barreling over people out across midfield and down near the Spartan 40-yard line. And the freshman's first carry of the day picked up right where he left off against Navy here at home. Yeah, sure did. Good block in there by the O-line and the wham back, Bellon. And, you know, no one hits the hole as hard as Lavalle does, as we've seen. Lavalle to Willicky's left. Two receivers to the far side. They hand off to Lavalle up the gut, continuing to carry bodies with him. And he's out beyond uh, the 40-yard line, short gain on the play. Up by the 38, should be second down and seven or so inside three minutes to go in this first quarter. An Army three drives, and they've used three different running backs. Connors on the first possession. Back on that last drive, and now Lavalle. And a false start will be called against Army ahead of second down. It's about the third or fourth false start we've seen in this first quarter for the Black Knight offensive line. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't know if the rain's making it difficult to hit the clap or what it is, but um, you don't normally see that many from Army, at least at this early on. Well, the rainfall has died down just a tad, not quite as forceful and torrential as it was in the first couple of minutes of this ball game. We'll see how that affects Army and St. Thomas Aquinas and how they decide to orchestrate their offensive plays. Willicky back to pass, fakes the handoff to Lavalle, trying to step up in the pocket and is brought down. Wrapped up in the backfield by Donnell White Jr., the former All-League first team member from last year. And it'll be third down and 13 for Army back at the 44. Textbook coverage sack there. Willicky had a decent amount of time. There's just nowhere to go with the ball. Second sack of the season for White. He came into play today second in the league in tackles. So third down and 13. Two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Lavalle to the left of Willicky. Milan in motion towards the formation. Willicky back to pass, throws it out far side looking for Simeon, and the pass falls incomplete. Yeah. Overshot him just a tad. No one was really open there either. Stack brought, you know, a pressure, one or two extra guys, and it looked like Willicky tried to throw a back shoulder away from the defense, but he was on top of it. So Army will be forced to punt for the first time today. As the pass fell incomplete, Bernard was the man on the coverage of for St. Thomas Aquinas. So Pirine back to punt. And it is a Michael back to receive for St. Thomas Aquinas. Pirine trying a little coffin corner action, and oh boy, is it a beauty! Down at about the one-yard line. Alex Pirine couldn't have walked it down to the goal line any better than that. Beautifully done as it was touched down by Evan Sawyer. And St. Thomas Aquinas is going to have their back at the goal line. Yeah, the return man just ran away from it. Like, I'm not going to mess with that. And then it backs up on the one-yard line. Great pump by Pirine. And Pirine I did not really start the season uh, as the punter. Zach Shaver, who was a starting left tackle, did a lot of the punting in the game against Penn. But Pirine, three punts last week against Cornell. And that one might be the best of his young college career. So uh, first down uh, for St. Thomas Aquinas 
at their own one yard line. Kenny takes the snap, handoff up the middle. Maroney just trying to push the pile out beyond the goal line. And what's the call? The Army D-line thinks he did not get out of the end zone. And there's been no call from uh, any of the officials, and it looks like it'll be second down at the one-yard line. And St. Thomas Aquinas, at least based on the emotions from the Army D-line, escaped to safety by inches. Yeah, you never really know from up here how close it was, but, um, you know, a great job by Army by stuffing the run again. Jones on the near side, out wide for St. Thomas Aquinas. And Solero races into the backfield before Kenny had an empty backfield alongside him. He'll throw to pass, throws it out near his side, trying to get out of the backfield is the running back, and he won't do so. That's going to be a safety. They try to swing pass to the running back, and Christian Denisio, who already has an interception, already has a fumble recovery today, picks up a, a tackle for a safety, and Army leads 12-zip. First of all, great play by Denisio, running downfield, making a great you know, one-on-one -on -one tackle on open field. Um, but, you know, football one-on-one, -on -one, you don't normally throw swing passes into the end zone. I don't I don't really understand the play call there, but um, Army makes them pay. I was going to say, I don't know if that was something that St. Thomas Aquinas maybe saw in terms of the personnel on the field, but that was certainly a, a play call I don't know if I've ever seen inside the goal line or by the goal line at any level of football. Maybe against my friends on Madden, but I haven't seen it in real life before. I was going to say, I mean, if you've got the 4 Madden Michael Vick, I mean, maybe <laughs> it makes sense because no one could tackle him or maybe Tecmo Bowl Bo Jackson. But yeah. Unfortunately <laughs> for all of us, know. this is not a video game. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately for us. So um, it is 12-0 Army. And now St. Thomas Aquinas has to punt it away from their own, or kick it away rather from their own 20-yard line after the safety. Belleville and Simeon are back to receive. It'll actually be taken by Balan at about the Army 40-yard line. Balan out across midfield, down by the St. Thomas Aquinas 40-yard line. And a great return for the Black Knights and great field position for Mikhail Willicke with 25 seconds to go in the quarter. Yeah, I would even say an underrated return. He was flat-footed completely when he caught that with guys already, you know, 5 to 10 yards away from him, made a couple guys miss and got it past midfield for Army offense. So Army West Point will take over. First down and 10 at the St. Thomas Aquinas 39-yard line. Far and away the best field position to start a drive for the Black Knights today. Reyna has picked back up again as the freight train wheels in the background. Willicke takes the handoff, pass out far side of the senior Lomanac. And Lomanac a good chunk on first down. His first catch on senior night. Yeah, that's just a read for Willicke. He's reading the outside linebacker to see if he drops down or stays in the curl window, and it's basically just a hot route, finds Lamanac right there. Final seconds of the quarter. Army will get one last playoff. It's Henry Beck cavorting up the middle inside the 30-yard line down near the 25. A big chunk play for the Army running back, and that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. The Army defense imposing their will per usual through 15 minutes at a damp Shea Stadium. It's Army 12 and stack nothing. You're watching CSFL football on night vision from YouTube. At the United States Military Academy, you're on the team from day one. A team where people are the number one priority and winning matters. A team of scholars, athletes, and leaders, each striving to become all that they can be. Are you ready to join our team? West Point, where, where leaders, leaders are made. made. Meet the Chevy ZR2 family. They'll never let you down. With features like DSSV dampers, MT tires, and an off-road performance display. 
When the going gets tough, it's a family you can count on. Introducing the Silverado, Colorado, and Silverado HD ZR2 family of trucks. Start of the second quarter, and the pass from Willicke trying to find Lomanac along the near side falls incomplete. Pass was just a tad bit short. On the coverage that time, Raul Ramirez will be second down at 10 for Army at the stack 23. But second quarter underway, Army up by a dozen. And the Black Knights, three defensive drives uh, and uh, three incredibly impressive drives from the defense, including a safety. Willicke, handoff up the middle. Henry Beck out across the 20. Chopped down by Christopher Jones. And it'll be third down and long upcoming for Army at about the 20. Just an off tackle run there. Um, stack defensive end sets the edge well, and the linebacker comes in and cleans back up after a short gain. Third and seven. Three receivers out to the far side. Single man near side. That is Simeon. Beck to the right of the quarterback, Willicke. Army's only touchdown today. A touchdown strike from Willicke to Simeon, or rather from Willicke to Ballant. Back to pass, Willicke steps up in the pocket under a lot of pressure, and he's going to go down for a sack. Malik Lucas comes up with the sack, his first of the year, and Army will have to bring the special teams unit out once more. Yeah, once again, it's another coverage sack. He has time. He steps up, and um, no one's open, and it's hard to complete a pass when all your receivers are covered, and, you know, the pocket's collapsing on you and takes a sack. The ball spotted at about the 23 yard line. So this will be about a 40 yard field goal attempt from the near side. P. Ryan drilled one earlier from about 27. Snap down, kick on its way, end over end kick, and it is no good. P. Ryan's kick misses wide, and uh, St. Thomas Aquinas will take over after Army West Point can't score for the first time today. I mean, that was good from. 10 to 15 more yards, just a little wide, high snap. Um, now the defense is faced with a little bit of momentum from Stack. And, you know, on the first drive after the kickoff return, they responded well, and hopefully they can do the same here. Jaden Vargas had good pressure for the Spartans off the far side. As the white and maroon clad St. Thomas Aquinas Spartans head back out on offense as the rain continues to pick back up in intensity. Two receivers bunched out near side. Solero to the left of the quarterback, Kenny. Man in motion across the formation. High snap, handoff up the middle to Solero, and he just ducked out of the way to avoid being decapitated. <laughs> James Windsor coming in there to make the stop, and Army's defensive line just got tremendous push. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. When he dodged that first tackle, I thought he had a gain of three or four, but... I mean, Windsor's in the backfield right when the ball was snapped. We saw him do that against Navy, too. Almost took a few handoffs himself. So, um, you know, he applies pressure every week and did a great job there. And it seems like James has gotten better and better with each passing week this season. Obviously, he's been a big contributor throughout his career. But especially this season, it seems like his play has improved with each passing week. Yeah, for sure. Two receivers out far side, two to the near side. Solero to the left of Kenny, under pressure. Steps up in the pocket. Now he decides to run, trying to get away from Gelati. A flag is thrown at the tail end of the play. And Gelati made the stop. A little bit slow to get up, helped up by his teammates. We'll see what the whistle is. Flag came in from in front of the play. Yeah, he's in the area of a hold, just taking a while to discuss it. And we'll be holding against the Spartans. So a costly, costly penalty for Stack. I'll back them up 10 more yards, and it'll be second down and uh, actually an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty called against St. Thomas Aquinas to further add salt into the wound. And I think it might have been on the very tail end of that play there. As you saw the uh, quarterback, Kenny, scramble past the tackler. It looked like it might have been Ethan Singh, uh, the left tackle, the guilty party there. It's a long way to go for that first down now. The ball is spotted 
Wow, and continue to walk further and further back. The ball is going to be spotted an inch or two inside the five-yard line. They need to get to the 30 at least to be in the vicinity of the first down marker. So about 25 yards to go on second down. Kenny takes the snap at the goal line. Under pressure, flings it over the middle, and it's almost picked. Guess who is in the vicinity again? It's Brendan Tierney. Tierney, who has picked off passes seemingly uh, every week this season, has three picks in four weeks and nearly came up with number four. Yeah, it looked like it hit him in the shoulder pad there. I don't think he saw it. it may have been tipped a little bit by the receiver. Uh, I don't know if that was a design screen, but the way the defensive line got through um, Stack's offensive line there, you know, maybe they covered the screen guy up, threw it over the middle, and lucky it wasn't intercepted. So second down and 26. Actually, third down and 26 at about the five. Kenny, again back to pass. Once more under pressure, throws it out far side and almost intercepted. Jonathan Abrahams was on that ball like a bullet. And that pass just a tad bit too high for him and it'll be fourth down. Man, that was, that was a pick six waiting to happen there. Super long throw up in the air for a very long time and just over the outstretched arms of both the defensive back and the receiver. And Abraham is a guy who has been playing with his hair on fire the last few weeks. Last two games, six pass breakups, including four in the game against Navy. So St. Thomas Aquinas will again punt. Ben Deloitte is back at the St. Thomas Aquinas, 35 to receive. Ideal block situation here. They're backed up. It's fourth and 26. Right. Um, and a guy in Seif Sammy doesn't have all but one career punt prior to uh, this one. And that was earlier tonight. And again, it takes a really nice Spartan roll out near midfield. And the long snapper DeBellis will touch it down. So an outstanding punt by Seif Sammy, the Norwalk, Connecticut native. And exactly what the Spartans needed. Still really good field position for the Black Knights. But when you consider Deloitte was set up at the 35, a much better turn of events for the Maroon and Gold. Yeah, Army Dionisio actually barely missed that block. That would have been I an mean, even greater, <laughs> greater night for him. And I'm just confused. Uh, it seems like every time we're announcing together, we don't catch punts. I get they always get 10 to 15 yards roll afterwards. So I don't know. I don't know what that's about, but. Anything trying to avoid a muff on a punt as Beck takes the handoff off tackle left side, making men miss and out by about the 35 yard line and a late whistle. And the question is who is the one that is the aggrieved party? It looked like a late push by the far sideline, but I saw Jaden Vargas from St. Thomas Aquinas end up being the one hitting the deck. And you know what? I think they picked up the flat. Vargas has seemed to, to bump into Beck incidentally as both were trying to get to the far sideline. So a good play on by the officials. But Army first down at 10 at the 35. Tossed out to Beck near side. Again, jolting forward out near the 25 and will be close to another first down. Yeah, just toss play there to the outside. Beck makes a strong north-south cut. Gets eight yards. Um, great run there by Beck. Beck been picking up yards and bunches, had two catches last week, and both of them went for touchdowns. First and 10 for Army. Actually, second down and two, rather. Ball spotted at the stack, 26. Beck alongside Willicky. Two receivers either side of the formation. The handoff, Beck, look to go up the middle, bounces off near side, out of beyond of the 20-yard line and knocked down just shy of the 15. Landed awkwardly on his lower back, hopefully nothing more than a stinger. And Army will pick up the chains. It'll be first down and 10 just outside the 10-yard line. Well, this is nothing new for Army. They've marched down on pretty much every drive that they've had. It's just red zone's been a little a little inefficient thus far. Mm. Credit to the St. Thomas Aquinas defense. Going to be another free play. Willicky near side looking for Simeon. Makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. Oh, my goodness. The Army sideline wanted it, but it's going to be encroachment on the Spartans and give the Black Knight offense five more yards, first and five. We've seen quite a few false starts and encroachments thus far. Um, Army doing a good job of mixing up the snap count. Really good throw by Willicky. I thought he got a foot in maybe, but um, I think the referee made the correct call. And he had a great angle at it. 
The official here on the near side by uh, the pylon. Willicky pitches it out left side. Lavale has some blockers over towards the five yard line. Knocks down a man and ends up stepping out right by the five yard line. A far official all over it. And it'll be second down for Army at the uh, five yard line. The guy's powerful. Doesn't matter what size the person is in front of him. It seems like every time Arthur Lavallee has a tackler in front of him, he turns him into tissue paper. <laughs> Another handoff. Lavallee up the middle, powering forward and into the end zone once again for six. The Louisiana native would not be denied, and with 10.22 to go in the second quarter, Army's taking an 18-0 lead. Unfortunately, a Spartan player down at the tail end of the play. But again, it's Arthur Lavallee making life miserable for their opponents. I mean, he was just bringing white shirts with him. Looked like those old uh, videos from like the 80s and 90s in college football where they had the tearaway jerseys. That's, yeah. He was just bringing people with him for the ride. A lot of tissue paper. A lot of tissue paper. And find a way to get uh, Lavallee into the uh, tissue paper stock market. Yeah, he's a lumberjack cutting down <laughs> trees. <laughs> It'll be Pirine for the PAT. As Army looking to further extend their lead. Tilly to hold, snap down, kick on its way. And it is up and good. And Army has taken a 19-0 lead with 10.22 to go in the first half. So this the third trip St. Thomas Aquinas has made in their program history to West Point. Army in the first two meetings has shut them out both times. 98 to nothing is the all-time score between these two programs, at least here at Shea Stadium. And for now, uh, that number continuing to rise to about 117. Yeah, about last St. Thomas Aquinas scoring here at West Point. Last time we played them, I was a sophomore here, and I think I believe it was 42 nothing maybe. And uh, you know they had a potent offense again that year, but you know when the defense is playing like it is, you can kind of neutralize that. And it's been so hard for any opponent to be able to produce anything against the Black Knight defense this year in St. Thomas Aquinas, a program in just its sixth year of existence continuing to improve with each passing season as seen by the bevy of Spartans littered across the league leaderboards. On the return, uh, not going to be a very long one out in the 25. Looks like Oxidine was in on the stop and a brief return there for Christopher Jones and the Spartans. Good kick coverage there. They really cleaned it up after the first kickoff. Um, we've seen deep kicks in, in the end zone. We've seen pooches like that, but the last three have been really well covered. All you can say, especially after the way the game started for Stack on the return game, Army West Point has done a marvelous job limiting what Nair Jones could do on the return since then. Absolutely. Fantastic job. So first down and 10 for St. Thomas Aquinas. Hasn't been uh, the Army side of midfield is since that opening drive. Maroney lined up to the far side of the quarterback. And the snap bobble. Kenny looking to make a pass, ended up losing it, and they're going to call it an incomplete pass. There was so much going on on that play, and there's a scrum over to the far side, a flag thrown by the far official. I'm not sure who uh, was the aggrieved party. Army clapping as if it'll be on stack, but the snap bobbled, tried to dump it off. It looked to be uh, to Michael. You know, I'm not a betting man unless I'm playing my fiance's dad in golf, but I'd probably say it's on stack. An incomplete pass. It will be a, a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against St. Thomas Aquinas, half the distance to the goal. And whatever it was there was at the tail end of the play. You saw the clapping from Jonathan Abrahams. But that play was, boom, 
<laughs> For lack of a better phrase, sort of a disaster from start to finish. I feel like we see something new on every drive tonight. I don't know if it's the weather, the time of year, what it is, but uh, you know, I've worked a lot in baseball in my pro broadcasting career. On normally, that's the phrase you hear in baseball. You can come to the ballpark, you might see something different you've never seen before each passing day. And uh, for us, at least here at Shea Stadium and Mikey Stadium this year, it's been the case for us in the sprint football world as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, still continuing to figure out where the Spartans will be backed up to. Right now it's spotted at the uh, Spartan 12. Have to get to about the 35 to convert. So about first down and 23. With my very shoddy math, Kenny fires it deep down the far side. Ton of pressure, and that's going to be pass interference on Army. Brendan Tierney came up with the pick, but the man covering the receiver on the far side was all over him. Yeah, Abrahams just gets turned around, doesn't really turn back to the ball, and that's unfortunate because whether or not he interfered, that ball would have been picked off. Well, right call by the official on the far side. And the Spartans get a break that they desperately needed after that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that immediately gives them a first down. Yeah, Abraham just had his arms around uh, the neck of Nair Jones. And as much as Tierney might have picked that one off regardless, something the officials just can't let slide. Absolutely. It's a challenge when you have really physical corners. You know, you want them to play press in their face, but it can also, you have to learn how to rein that in. The ball at the Spartan 27-yard line after the pass interference call. 9.59 to go here in the first half. Army a 19 to nothing lead. Mikhail Willicke started the scoring. Found Maurice Ballon over the middle on Army's first drive. And an Alex Pirine field goal made it 10 nothing for a uh, safety on a great tackle by Denisio made it a 12 nothing game. And then a Lavalet touchdown run made it 19. And now Kenny is going to get called for intentional grounding. They won't throw the flag because I believe they're going to mark him down uh, before a flag needs to be thrown or, or, well, they just heard me say that and decided we're going to do the opposite. Yeah, I think <laughs> the, the referees are also tuning in your headset. Um, it honestly would have been better if he just would have taken the sack, but. <laughs> uh, running for his life on that last play as the Army defensive pressure continues to create a miserable evening in addition to the conditions for Kenny. And it was Sullivan who got there, in addition to Ryan Rast, and Kenny just trying to do anything he could to save uh, the loss of yardage. That'll be second down, and instead of being at the 27, they're all the way back at the 12. And another whistle and another false start. The penalties have been coming fast and furious on this Friday evening here in West Point, New York. Seems like each drive's a seesaw, just back and forth. Hasn't been an easy night for the officials in terms of figuring out where balls need to be spotted considering the plethora of laundry we've seen on the turf. So, ball is now back inside the 10 at about the eight yard line. They need to get beyond the 35 for the first pass thrown over the middle. Good gain on the play. Sean Cuff on the stop. Philip Meikle making the grab out of Englewood, New Jersey. Nice pass there by Kenny. Seam right over the middle and Cuff's just a tad too late to break that pass up. It's only second down. Actually rather third down. And about 13 from the 25. Two receivers to the far side, one near side. That's Luke McKenna. Back to pass is Kenny. Throws it out far side. Diving attempt over there by the far sideline by Swanson, but it'll fall incomplete. That one was a dead duck going to nowhere. 
And Swanson, a great job to adjust in the air. But Army will take over as St. Thomas Aquinas will be forced to punt. Army brings pressure there. Gelati off the edge, I um, believe is maybe a cover one there on third down. Um, applies pressure again, hits the running back in the backfield, and Kenny doesn't really have a choice. So again, Army set to receive on the punt. Almost came away with a block on the last punt attempt from Steve Sammy. Not the normal punter for the Spartans, just his third punt, the snap very low, but had plenty of time to get it away. Let's it fly along the near side and will go out of bounds on the Army side of midfield. And the Black Knights will take over, although a flag is thrown and is down at about the stack 30 yard line. Yeah, you're right, I don't know if they have washing machines on the field or what, but there will be a holding on the return against Army, so that'll push them back 10 more yards. And uh, they will start to drive first down and 10 inside uh, their own territory. If I'm Army here, I'm trying to put this game away, absolutely, without a doubt. Score one or two more touchdowns before half and don't give up any points. It's, it's pretty much all said and done. I was going to say, with the way the Army defense has played today, they have really not given up much of anything. As someone who's played on this defense for many years, is there anything you've seen through the first 15, 20 minutes tonight that you think that they could do better than what they've done today? That pass interference call, I think, probably. <laughs> if that's going to yeah. be the only bugaboo, and you're doing something right, that uh, screen to the far side looked to be Deloitte, the receiver, and he's out across midfield. An outstanding play as Ben Deloitte had plenty of room to run, but could not find a way to escape the final couple of tacklers to go the distance. But that's an unfortunate flag. I think they flag. got I think they got Belleville on a hold there. He pushes guy out of bounds for ten to fifteen yards and they call the hold. So another flag here in this first half. It seems like the clock hasn't moved very much at all in the second quarter because of the plethora of yellow hankies on the field. Looked like Belleville maybe got underneath the sleeve of number 20, Elijah Jean. So Army first and 20 at their own 22. This could have been a drive that started at the 41. There's a toss out far side, plenty of room to operate out beyond uh, the 40 yard line and an excellent run for Army on that little uh, sweep play from uh, Henry Beck. Yeah, it's been working. Um, the edge has been pretty open, especially when you hit the middle like, we, like uh, Army has been. Really opens up the edges for perimeter. An 18 yard gain on first and 20. It's second down and two. And off up the middle. Beck wide open spaces. He's loose out across the 40, 30, 25. Tries to cut inside and is pushed out of bounds just shy of the stack 20 yard line. Henry Beck has been a wrecking ball alongside Lavalle tonight. And Army's offense back in business. Army's going straight into tempo. They're not wasting any time. Trying to keep the Spartans on their heels amidst the downpour. Handoff again. It's Beck trying to use his offensive line to push the pile forward. Zach Shaver a couple of good blocks. Out just shy of the 15-yard line. Ball will be spotted at the 17. Pick up a four. Yeah, I'm sure we both heard the uh, mantra, you could drive a truck through that, but I mean, the super long gain, that's what it was. A great job by the offensive line. I actually got in trouble for not shouting them out enough, so <laughs> this is for all of you guys. Great job up front. A lot of talent on uh, that offensive line, including three seniors, Trayton Thomas, Alec Wells, and Zach Shaver, and another flag is thrown. A false start once more. And there has been at least, I'd have to say at this point, 10 combined false start penalties in this first half. Yeah, I don't know. Do uh, penalty flags wear out after a while? Like if they get really wet, do you have, I, to, I, do you have to replace them? Or? I don't know, but they might need to find a way to get them in the dryer yeah. here at Shea Stadium or at Gillis Fieldhouse for the start of the second half. 
Maybe that. They're just trying to use him to soak up the water on the on the turf. Screen pass to Lomanac. Has some blockers out across the 15. And shot down at about the 10-yard line. It'll be a Black Knight first down. That's the first screen Army's ran all night, and it works nearly to perfection. Great job by Lomanac. You know, staying north and south. That's what he likes to do. And the offensive line blocking up front. Second catch of the night for the Silva, North Carolina native. Two receivers on either side of the formation. Simeon and Lomanac near side. Now at far side for Army is Belleville and Co. They hand it off to Ryan Connors. Tried to make a couple of men miss, but could not do so. Lucas and Jones uh, on the tackle will be second down. So it'll be second and goal for Army at about the St. Thomas Aquinas eight yard line. 6.20 to go here in the first half. Army has dominated the time of possession. Seemingly part of this now for the Spartans is just exhaustion for being on the field defensively. 100%. Well, that might have been another free play. Pass over the middle looking for Deloitte falls incomplete. Might have been a tad bit behind him. Thought for a second there might have been a jump on the near side of the line from the Spartans. I saw it too. I don't know if he actually crossed into the neutral zone. Um, but, you know, we're talking about it again. Army's, you know, apparent inefficiency in the red zone. Last drive we had Lavalle in there and basically ran everybody over. But now third and long. Army came into play today scoring touchdowns on 13 of their 19 red zone drives. Willicky back to pass, fires over the middle and incomplete. Over the head of his intended target, Kobe Simeon. And it'll be fourth down upcoming for Army and Alex Pierine will come back out with a field goal unit. Yeah, it's, it's just a tad disappointing. It feels like, you know, we've left almost 10 or 12 points on the board for not, not punching it in. And, you know, over the course of the game, maybe not this game, but a different one that can catch up to you. So it'll be Pirine on for the field goal try. So be about 25 yards straight on. Tilly to hold. And it's a fake. Tilly fires it near side for Belleville. And it's a touchdown. They break out the trick play. And Tilly finds Belleville for six on the fake field goal. That is the first time I've ever seen that happen in the four years that I've been here. The only time they ever do it is in practice and it never works, but you know, when they don't see it at all throughout the year, I actually love the play call. I think it's brilliant. We we haven't shown that in four years and then out of nowhere in the rain. I've been working at Army since 2015 that fall. I have not seen that play run ever at home for the Black Knights sprint football team. Tilly was so excited, he almost forgot to stay on the field to hold for the extra point. The extra point is up and good. And the special teams unit doing it in a multitude of ways today, as this time it's Matthew Tilly, the junior from Baton Rouge, finding Scott Belleville on the touchdown strike. And look at Tilly getting mobbed along the near side. I think if you ask anybody on the team if Tilly would have a passing touchdown tonight's game, they would definitely say no. And he's the type of guy to get really animated. He actually dislocated his shoulder a few few weeks back. So it's good to see him uh, put it in the end zone. What's it like being on the sideline for moments like that? Tilly, a guy that maybe not getting as much playing time as others, getting an opportunity to put the ball in his hands and able to create a touchdown with Belleville. I'll be honest with you, it's, it's flat out dangerous. You got guys hitting you in every single place on your body as hard as they can, and uh, you can't really escape it because there's 20 or 30 of them mobbing you. Um, you know, some guys like to celebrate on the field, but I always like to get to the sideline as soon as I can and see everybody. You know, the same. So there's one way to guarantee you can't get yourself a penalty. As long as you do it on the sideline, you're good. As Meikle will fake a little bit of a kneel down on the return, decides to take it, and is spun down by one of the young players on this defense, Evan Sawyer, and it looked like also the senior, Dylan Dennis, wasn't on the team last year, back on the roster this season, and making a big special teams play on senior night. Yeah, Sawyer and Dennis, um, both bring him down there. Sawyer may be the fastest player to the ball. The only thing I'm, other person I think of is Gelati, but that kid runs as hard and fast as he can at the ball every single time, and it's fun to watch. 26 to nothing Army. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas takes over 
at their own 22 with 535 to go in the half. They hand off up the middle. Maroney has plenty of room to run. By far the biggest gap we've seen today created by the stack offensive line. And a big gain on first down, and they'll move the sticks. Yeah, and if I'm stack, I'm obviously desperately trying to get points on the board, not only for the score, but for the team's morale overall. It's a lot, 26 nothing. 26-7 is a lot different than potentially 33-nothing. Maroney, a multi-sport athlete at St. Thomas Aquinas also on the men's lacrosse team in the spring. Two receivers either side, bunch to the far side. A lot of movement on the line, and who is the one that jumped first? It's going to be yet another false start. <laughs> Left tackle. So another false start penalty backs up St. Thomas Aquinas, another five. And it'll be first down and 15 back at their own 28. Clock continuing to run inside, five minutes to go in the half. Single man near side, back to pass Kenny. Holds it deep down the right sideline. Is his man in bounds or not? That is the question. And it'll be incomplete. Looking for Nair Jones. Jones hold it in, but Swanson a blanket on coverage as Jones couldn't make the grab in bounds. Yeah, potentially lucky there. It was actually a pretty good throw by Kenny. Uh, split both Brahim and Cuff on the sideline there, and um, Army's fortune, he was out of bounds. Now first, or rather second down at 15. Justin Rock alongside Caleb Self, Army a 26-0 lead here on senior night over St. Thomas Aquinas. Black Knights honoring their senior class in a pregame ceremony on the field here at Shea Stadium. About a half hour or so before this one got underway, and the weather has been making its impact as well. In and out of downpours throughout the course of the night. Kenny running for his life, tries to step up in the pocket and gets sandwiched. Ryan Rast and Michael Sullivan. A senior sandwich on the sack. <laughs> yeah, Caught you off guard there. <laughs> yeah, uh, with Kenny in the middle, um, great play there by the defensive line coming in from both sides, and there's nowhere he can go. And Rast last week picked up a sack to reach the Double-digit plateau in his outstanding career here at Army. And Sullivan, a guy who was an outstanding all-league first-team member last year as a linebacker, has been seamless in his transition to the D-line. Third down and about 20 yards to go. And a timeout taken by St. Thomas Aquinas ahead of third down with 342 to go here in this first half. Timeout taken by their head coach, Matt Barry. Right now, Caleb, you've been on that Army sideline ahead of this third down. Take a look back at the uh, trick play touchdown. Matthew Tilly to Scott Belleville. You know it's a good play when your receiver has time to gather himself underneath the ball before pushing himself into the end zone. Yeah, like we, like we discussed, they had no idea it was coming. We had no idea it was coming, and it works to perfection. But this has been a dominant first half for Army defensively. And the weather's certainly been uh, an impact and a factor in this game, but really based on the way particularly both teams have called their offensive plays, it seems like they really haven't taken the weather too much into account in what plays have been called. No, the only difference is Army hasn't really thrown any perimeter passes, which they usually do. They're sticking to the toss plays on the ground and then steam routes over the middle on the, on the pass. Back to pass, Kenny. Again, pressure off the edges, and down he goes once more. It is just a, a bum rush from the Army defensive line. Goulet, Windsor, I think everybody on the defensive line gets a credit for a sack there. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, there's some stack fans below us asking them to throw the ball. I would challenge that to where too. I mean, the receivers are three yards into their routes, and there's six guys in the backfield, so there's not really anything you can do. I mean, that was a, as ferocious a pass rush as you'll ever see. I mean, Kenny... There's nothing he could do. They had no time to even purvey what was going on down the field. Took the snap and had three guys in his face. So Sammy again back to punt 
at his own goal line. Deloitte back in midfield to receive. That's a low line drive kick taken by Deloitte on a bounce just on the Army side of midfield. Deloitte out to the near sideline, lowering the shoulder and pushed out of bounds at the stack 40-yard line. And Army, again, excellent field position as they take over with 2.44 to go in the half. Yeah, there's a chance to extend the lead even more for Army. Um, pretty good field position. Great job by Deloitte fielding that punt and getting a good, nice little return in. And like we just like we said earlier, if it's 33 nothing at the half in this weather, with how it's gone this far, I mean, it's gonna be tough to come back from. Army, with the way the score is now, have outscored their opponents 137 to nine in the first half this season. I'm not a math major, but I'm pretty sure that's good. Willicky in shotgun as they get ready to start the drive from the stack 37. Hand off, up the middle, it's Lavalle. He's got space, up the middle, makes one man miss. A bevy of flags are thrown. It looks like it might be a horse collar or a face mask, but Lavalle, a big gain on first down, and he'll get more on the penalty. I mean, I've never seen anyone run like that in this league. It's it's pretty fun to watch. I and mean, I've never seen a guy run through a face mask like that. Yeah, it's it's crazy. At any level. I mean, it happened so fast you didn't even realize that it happened. Yeah, luckily I, I saw the flags come in. That's the only reason I saw it. Um, but even before he got touched, he had 20, 25 yards. It'll be a face mask penalty on the Spartans, and they'll mark that about half the distance to the goal. And Army will have first and goal at the Spartan six-yard line. I mean, when you have that three-headed monster of Beck, Lavalle, and Connors in your backfield, there is very little an opposing defense can do, especially when you've got the weapons that Army has on the outside with Willicke under center. Another handoff, Lavalle, good pressure from the defensive line by Stack. That might be one of the best tackling jobs we've seen on Lavalle all season. They got the first hit on him and did not let him go. Yeah, I think especially the way the last red zone drive went with Lavalle, that they knew it was going to be run up the middle to start, and they were, they were prepared for it. JoJo Miranda on the tackle that time for Stack. So it'll be second down and goal. Now the five-yard line, two minutes to go. Here in the first half. Willicke takes the snap, back to pass, throws it far side. A flag is thrown on the fade pattern of the far part of the end zone. Try to get it to Balan. This might be a pass interference. Yeah, the pass interference or a whole nice route by Balan, cutting in, cutting back out, and the defensive back got fooled. Well, a pass interference called on Ballon. And so uh, instead of an automatic first down, Army backed up a 10 yards on the play. And now they'll have second down and goal outside the 10-yard line. I, I don't agree with that. I mean, he's running full speed. It's not necessarily the receiver's fault that the kid falls over and then pulls him down afterwards. I. That's one of the worst calls we've seen tonight. So second and goal at the 20. And Willicke drops the snap and then just falls on it. Tried to pitch it out to the near side and Ryan Connors. Well, Willicke in a 26 point game wasn't leaving anything to chance. Just decided to plop right on top of the ball. Patting himself on the chest saying that's my bat. So third down and 26 at the 26. Be curious to see what the Black Knights draw up offensively here. From offensive coordinators Mike Sala and Mike Witkovich. Rain is starting to sub, uh, subside just a tad. Army will hand it off on third and goal as Ryan Connors barrels forward and is tripped up at about the 15 yard line. An 11 yard run for Connors on third and goal. And it'll be fourth down upcoming for Army. And now they'll bring the special teams unit onto the field. Inside a minute to go here in the half. Another failed red zone attempt for Army. Oh, interesting. Thought there might have been some questions about whether or not they might be able to get it off with the play clock, but don't see any of the play clock 
clock's working. Maybe they're just trying to get back to Tilly here for another touchdown pass. I don't know. Anything's possible. This will be about a 33-yard try. Straight on for Pirine. Kick is up, and it is good. Alex Pirine drills it straight on from 33 yards out. His second successful field goal of the day. And Army West Point takes a 29-0 lead with 13 seconds to go in the half. Also worth noting, St. Thomas Aquinas won the opening coin toss, elected it to receive. And so Army will get the ball back to start the third quarter. Yeah, I want to highlight Ryan Connors' run on third down. Gain of about 15, set up the field goal, which is really important. You know, a lot of teams on third down, they're like, oh, whatever, we're just kicking a field goal. But to get that extra, those insurance yards um, is a lot more important than people uh, make it out to be. As much yardage as you can get to make the job for the field goal kicker all the easier. And that's exactly what Ryan Connors did, and Connors knows that well. He served in the role of place kicker the last time Army played here at Shea Stadium against Penn back at the tail end of September. So Pirine will kick it away. Michael and Nair Jones uh, back to receive for the Spartans. This is going to be a squibbed kick and the Spartans jump on it right at about midfield. So Stack will have great field position with about nine seconds to go in the half but that more strategic from Army to try and keep the ball out of Jones hands. Yeah, I don't disagree with the squip call at all. Um, <laughs> it's pretty impressive to stop it that quickly, almost like an onside kick. And now you, know, you have to expect stacked either just take a knee or air it out. And it's one of those situations you either sit on it and go to the locker room or you tell your quarterback, let's see how far you can chuck it. And the way they set up offensively, it looks like the Spartans are gonna see how far Ryan Kenny can let this one fly. 29 nothing Army with nine seconds to go in the first half. Black Knights trying to move to 5-0 and on the season. Three receivers near side, Solero and McKenna. The snap is fumbled, trying to just push himself forward as Kenny after picking it up. And he'll maybe gain a yard or two, but that's going to take us to halftime. Seen quite a few drop snaps on both sides today, but overall a dominant first 30 minutes in all three facets of the game for the black and gold on senior night. It has been a plethora of seniors who have made an impact at the half here at Shea Stadium. Army West Point 29 and St. Thomas Aquinas nothing. We'll take a break. We'll have some highlights and more coming up for you at the half. You're watching CSFL football on a night vision uh, from YouTube. Attention veterans. You can shop tax-free for life. Come home to your military exchanges for tax-free shopping, exclusive pricing, and free shipping options. 100% of earnings go back to military communities, keeping today's military ready and resilient. You serve. You sacrificed. You earned this benefit. Visit shopmyexchange.com slash bets to shop and save today. Meet the Chevy ZR2 family they'll never let you down with features like DSSV dampers MT tires and an off-road performance display when the going gets tough it's a family you can count on introducing the Silverado Colorado and Silverado HD CR2 
know, coming out here, playing against North Dakota, playing against Bemidji, already played against Union. These are games that, as a result of playing them, we're going to be a better team because of it, especially if you get in the league. Right? For the first time ever, the cadets have come to the rally. Army and North Dakota have only played each other once in hockey. They've come together tonight as part of the Icebreaker Tournament. This annual event marks the official start to the college hockey season. The cadets have participated in the Icebreaker twice before, and they now have the second youngest team in the country. However, as often heard at West Point, no excuse, sir. North Dakota and, and obviously tonight I think we took a big step and, and I think this experience will will help us as we get ready to get into our own league play. USAA? Yeah, they have awesome rates on coverage for our car, home, and stuff. She has a lot of stuff. Dad. A lot of cool stuff, honey. But USAA also has banking, credit cards, and loans. Plus advice and other perks. Only for emergencies. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> and it's all in one spot. So we know she's all set, because we've got USAA. USAA, more than you might think, for the military community and their families. Back here uh, at West Point. Halftime here at Shea Stadium. Uh, Army West Point on uh, senior night. A 29 to nothing lead over St. Thomas uh, Aquinas. Uh, joined alongside Caleb Self from Justin Rock. Happy to be with you on uh, Night Vision uh, from YouTube uh, this evening. Uh, Caleb, first uh, 30 minutes for the Black Knights on all phases of the game, seemingly as close to perfect as you can get outside of maybe a few hiccups down near the goal line. Yeah, they're in complete control of the game. That's right where you want to be. Pretty much, you know, 30 to nothing a half. And um, you expect much of the same in the second half, especially with this weather. I don't expect the defense to let up one bit. Um, look for the offense to maybe control the clock a little bit more, uh, keep the ball on the ground, and um, we should be in for a pretty good second half. A 29 to nothing lead for the Black Knights uh, at the break. And Army on senior night have done it in a multitude of different ways. This is how it started, the interception from Denisio on the opening possession of the game. And then Willicke found Maurice Ballon to give Army a 7-0 lead in the first quarter. Ballon's first career touchdown coming on a drive that started off Denisio's first career interception. A strip sack 
led to an Army field goal. And then this tackle by Denisio uh, Solero in the end zone led to a safety, made it a 12-0 Army lead. And then fittingly, Arthur Lavallee, number 19 in black and gold, punched it in, made it a 19-0 Army advantage. But that was far from the only excitement for the Black Knights uh, in uh, the first half as the sacks were plenty uh, on uh, quarterback Kenny of uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, Henry Beck, Ryan Connors, and Arthur Lavallee all had an impact rushing the ball on the ground. Really didn't matter, Caleb, who Army handed the ball off to. All three very productive in the first half. Yeah, it starts up front with the offensive line. Um, they've done a great job of blocking so far, whether that's insides or outside runs. Both of them have been great. And yeah, you said that the running backs have been extremely productive, averaging, I'd have to imagine, around six or seven yards a carry, at least. Um, you know, they're making good moves and they're also running through contact, as you see right here, through a face mask. And that's all you can ask your running backs to do. Lavalle has been outstanding alongside Henry Beck and Ryan Connors. Throw in uh, a fake field goal that led to the last Army touchdown. Matthew Tilly to Scott Belville. And it all adds up to a dominant first half for the Black Knights as they lead at the break 29 to nothing. We'll step aside for a moment. When we come back, we'll have the start of the second half. Army 29, stack nothing. This is Sprint Football on Night Vision from YouTube. Attention veterans, you can shop tax-free for life. Come home to your military exchanges for tax-free shopping, exclusive pricing, and free shipping options. 100% of earnings go back to military communities, keeping today's military ready and resilient. You serve, you sacrifice, you earn this benefit. Visit shopmyexchange.com slash vets to shop and save today. turn out to be a black belt or play Carnegie Hall I'll take the chicken fingers but with the money you earn from your pen fed checking and savings accounts he's growing up look at him your goal of supporting his dreams will always be worth it I got it USAA? Yeah, they have awesome rates on coverage for our car, home, and stuff. She has a lot of stuff. Dad. A lot of cool stuff, honey. But USAA also has banking, credit cards, and loans. Plus advice and other perks. Only for emergencies. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> and it's all in one spot. So we know she's all set, because we've got USAA. USAA, more than you might think, for the military community and their families. Army has just taken the field for the start of the second half alongside uh, Caleb Self, former Army West Point sprint football safety. I'm Justin Rock, Black Knights at the break, leading St. Thomas Aquinas 29 uh, to nothing. Uh, the weather has been a storyline here today as it has been off and on torrential downpours throughout the course uh, of uh, pregame and into the game, and I'm sure into the overnight hours as well. But 
Caleb, you've been in that locker room many, many times, especially in situations like these, 29 nothing at the half. Your first team squad on every phase of the game have done their job. Do you expect uh, Coach West to use more of the backups starting now in the second half? I think he'll at least start out with the starters, at least for a little bit. Um, you know, you don't want to leave any doubt. You want to put this thing away as soon as you can in the second half. And uh, so I expect them to come out swinging just like they did in the first half and extend the lead even further. Um, and then after that, I think we'll see some of the, the backups. The weather really hasn't affected a whole lot of the play calling. Mark West has trusted Mikhail Willicke to throw the ball, as has been the case for Matt Barry, trusting Ryan Kenny to throw the ball for St. Thomas Aquinas. Does that surprise you at all that the weather really hasn't impacted how many times each team has thrown the ball, although you did mention Army has frayed away from throwing the ball towards the sidelines? I'm a little bit surprised just by Stack's passing performance to this point. Um, the Army could easily have four or five interceptions, and um, but you also can't run the ball against Army, so you're kind of you're kind of handcuffed. Especially with the way the Army defense closed out that first half, that last drive for St. Thomas Aquinas, one of the plays it seemed like as soon as Kenny took the snap, there were four defensive linemen bearing down his neck. St. Thomas Aquinas won the opening coin toss, elected it to receive. So they will kick it away to Army to start the second half. Bo Maroney will kick it away. Kobe Simeon to the far side. Scott Belleville to the near side, back to receive for the Black Knights. This one sent out far. will be taken by Simeon at about the 12. Across the 20, 25, and is brought down a yard or two shy of the 30-yard line. Spilled that time, I believe, by Sterling Lewis. So Army West Point will start the second half. Good field position. First and 10 at their own 30-yard line. And Caleb, it seemed like really the only boogaboo for Army in the first half was executing inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, that's about it. Otherwise, they've ran the ball very effectively. They've also had some pretty long passes, one for a touchdown, and then obviously the the fake on special teams but um, definitely a point of emphasis at halftime was you got to punch them in when you're in the red zone and I'm excited to see um, how we do in second half. Belleville out near side alongside Ballon. Willicke stays in the game uh, in shotgun. They hand it off up the middle to Henry Beck. Able to hurdle uh, a tackler or two as Kyle Marsha makes the stop. Small gain on first down uh, for Beck, who had a phenomenal uh, first half. Many different ways, but he was extremely effective, whether it be in between the tackles or tossed out wide. Yeah, he's a super versatile back, as, as you just mentioned, and that's what makes him special. You don't know if he's going to go inside the tackles or out, and make him pay, he can make you pay either way. Came into play today, fourth in the league in rushing yards and fifth in all-purpose yards. And a handoff up the middle, and whoa, nobody saw that? Wow. <laughs> Looked like Trayton Thomas just got thrown uh, to the canvas by Brian Oneman from St. Thomas Aquinas. Looked to be by the face mask, too, but no call, and Army will have third down. I thought he'd get a senior night call, maybe. Well, third and five for Army at their own 35. Three receivers out near side, Belleville, Ballon, and Lomanac. Simeon on an island to the far side right. Beck out of the backfield to the left. They throw it out that way. Beck across the 35, down near the 40-yard line. And will be very close to the first down marker. We'll see where he spotted. And it looks like it's going to be fourth down and about a yard. Just shy of the 40-yard line. Yeah, the way they've controlled the line of scrimmage tonight, and yeah, you see Lavalet come in, I think they're they're going to go. Army going to go for it here on fourth down, up by 29 on their first drive of the second half. The Army came into play today, 6 of 10 on fourth down this year. St. Thomas Aquinas stacks the box as Army looks to the sideline for further instruction. Willicky 
Tosses it out far side, Lavale. Lavale trying to get the edge and does out beyond the 45. Tackled shy of midfield and may get an extra 15 yards for a late hit out of bounds. Yeah, look like a horse collar there around right on the sideline. Lavale, great job getting to the edge, turning on the burners and getting the first down. Thought for a second there was a little bit of hesitation on that pitch from Willicky to Lavale, but as soon as Lavale got to that edge, it was all over intents and purposes, and a face mask against Stack will add 15 yards to the end of the run for Lavale second time. St. Thomas Aquinas has been called for a face mask on Lavale today. Look to be more, I believe, I think you're right, of a horse collar than a face mask, but 15 yards is 15 yards. Correct. I mean, I guess we have better eyes than the officials do right next to the play, but we also have the benefit of replay. Willicky over to the far side. Lomanac, good block by Simeon. and ends up picking up a couple of extra yards at the tail end of the play out by the far sideline. Beautifully done by Lomanac. Hasn't had many big splash plays today, but been very effective catching the ball on the far sides. Sure has. And he had that screen in the first half around 20 yards as well. Um, he's a really hard runner, catches the ball, and is looking to punish the defenders. Second and three for Army at the Spartan 29. Willicky, handoff Lavalet up the gut and darting himself forward for a first down inside the stack 25 yard line and an injury timeout on the field. Army player down or was down at the tail end of the play. And it looks to be uh, the junior from West Virginia, Logan Powell, is walking off on his own power, but with a little bit of a limp. Yeah, hate to see that. He's one of the integral parts of the offensive line. Super strong kid, very hard worker, and um, really a glue guy for the offensive line. All league second team a season ago. As Army West Point continuing to drive down the field against the Spartans. I'm going to. Finish this drive the same way they closed out their first drive of the ball game with a touchdown. Another end around this time to Belon on the second pitch over the far side of the end zone, and he's in for a touchdown. The end around to Maurice Belon. He's got one through the air, one on the ground, and Army West Point has taken a 35 to nothing lead with 11.29 to go in the third. Seeing Army open up the playbook a little bit with the fake and then the reverse. We actually ran that play against Penn and Ballon threw it. He has that ability and I think he ran off all the defenders and there's no one there. An excellently diagrammed play for the Black Knights and Willicky saw it before. Ballon even made it to the end zone. So P. Ryan on for the extra point. And that one is up and good. And with 11.29 to go in the third quarter, Army West Point has opened up a 36 to nothing lead. Army, since beating Navy two weeks ago, have now outscored their opponents by a score of 99 to nothing over the last six plus quarters. I don't know about you, Caleb, but I think that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times, you know, there can be sort of a Navy slumber after you play them, but that's not the case with this team, and they really turned it on, used it as a momentum piece. I was going to say, if anything, it was the exact opposite. A 63 nothing drubbing last week against Cornell. Had three different quarterbacks throw for two touchdowns in that game. What was it like in the lead-up to that game last week? Building off the success of Navy and not letting, you know, the comp or not letting that game get to the heads of the players too much. Yeah, you know, the season's not over. We're still going for a championship, and I think that's a huge motivator for all the guys and something to rally around. Jones to receive it about the 15-yard line. Had a great return to start the game for the Spartans and ends up in a massive bodies right in front of the 40-yard line. Good return for one of the talented freshmen on this Spartan roster. And they'll start their first drive of the second half with 11.22 to go. And if you're in that St. Thomas Aquinas huddle, what are you trying to do in order to try and build some form of momentum and confidence as the second half gets underway? I think chiefly you got to eliminate penalties. I mean, they've had a few third and forevers, which is not conducive to gaining yards or scoring points. 
I'll hand it off on the first play of the half. Maroney looking to cut it out far side as Weber Carse finally able to chop him down. Great pickup by Maroney who also serves as a kicker for Stack. Good run on first down for the Spartans, their first play of the half. Maroney, special teams player of the week two weeks ago. Not too far away from here, grew up in Sparta, New Jersey. Another handoff to Maroney, and he's probably going backwards. Well, after they got good push on the offensive line on first down, and the first play of the drive, Army's defensive line reasserts their will. Great job there. Um, just a standard running back blast up the middle there, and Army seals off the edge, and then the linebackers and defensive line come up the middle. The third down and nine. Ball spotted at their own 35-yard line. Maroney to the right of Kenny. Rass looking ready to rush. High snap. Rass chasing him out to the far side. And they throw it near side for Jones, and it's incomplete. I think St. Thomas Aquinas may have wanted a potential holding call or a legal contact call. Saw a couple of receivers pointing. But the pass falls to the turf incomplete, and it's fourth down. Weber Carse almost picked that off. Great coverage there. Um, playing as an other underneath guy for the defensive backs, and Kenny very fortunate that wasn't picked off and potentially returned for six. Army has picked off Kenny once already today on the first drive. That was just the third pick of the season thrown by Kenny, who came in a play today tied with Mikhail Wilkie for the fewest interceptions in the league. See Sammy to punt it away. This a wobbling kick to the near side taken by Deloitte at the 30. A flag thrown as he made the catch. Makes a man miss at the 40 and runs out of bounds of the 45-yard line. But it certainly looked like that flag was thrown in the area of holding. Yeah, block in the back, I think, on Abraham's there around midfield. We'll wait for the call from the officials. Flag was down at about the 35. It was indeed an illegal block in the back on Jonathan Abrahams. And so Army West Point will have to back up from the spot of the foul as they will take over first down and 10 as Mikhail Willeke's job uh, appears to be done. On senior night, the native of Tampa, Florida will acquiesce and hand the baton over to another firstie. On senior night in Alabama's Seth Brown will take over under center with 9.46 to go in the third quarter. Had a couple of touchdown passes last week. Try to get away. Ball is on the floor, and it's picked up by St. Thomas Aquinas, and they take over. There was a complete mismatch on the snap. Brown and the running back seemed to collide. Ball ended up on the canvas. And St. Thomas Aquinas able to get the turnover. Yeah, that's not exactly how you draw it up. It was a bad snap, a little high. Messed up the timing, and then Seth and the running back ran into each other. It was a high snap, trying to get it to Connors. And honestly, credit belongs on that play to Christopher Jones who was in the backfield and really didn't give Army an opportunity to make a clean handoff. High snap didn't help. But Jones beat his man seemingly off the jump. And a whistle before the play gets underway. A lot of chirping from the far sideline. Not sure what the Spartans are aggrieved about. You know, back to the pen game. Maybe they're discussing dinner. Anything's possible. Although if they brought food to the ballpark tonight, it might be a little bit damp at this point. Yeah, we could use some up here if they want to borrow. Absolutely. Whatever they want, whatever they want to deliver, we'll take it. <laughs> so the Spartans will take over inside uh, the Army red zone. On the 19-yard line, best 
Field position of the game for Stack. Back to pass, Kenny fires it out near side, and for the end zone, and Jones incomplete. Got his hands on it, but couldn't reel it in. Brahim Swanson on the coverage made life difficult. Really good coverage there by uh, Bry. You know, he's running with them all the way to the pylon. They motion a guy in, trips into the boundary, and gets his head around, makes a great play. Well, they've done a nice job limiting what Jones could do offensively today. Came into play today, leading the league in receiving yards and second in receiving touchdowns. But his impact on the offensive side of the ball, minimal. Kenny, back to pass, throws it out near side, finds his man in front of the 15-yard line. That's Elio Nexus Lopez. A short gain, and it'll be third down uh, for St. Thomas Aquinas at the Army 16, third down and seven. Same sort of play call there, motion into the boundary, have three guys there and trying to create some misdirection for the Army defense. Nine minutes to go in the third. First team defense still on the field for the Black Knights. Trying to force fourth down. And Thomas Aquinas, 33%. Well, third down coming into play tonight. Solero to the right of the quarterback, Kenny. Two receivers bunched on either side of the formation. Back to pass. Under pressure. Ball is out on the floor. Who's got it? There's five bodies there. Windsor is pointing to say it's Army Ball, but St. Thomas Aquinas recovers. It'll be a loss of about 15 some odd yards, and it'll be fourth down out near the 30. Yes, yeah, Dak runs, you know, a mesh concept over the middle of their uh, doubles bunch right next to the line. And it looks like, I don't know if the ball just... <laughs> yeah, he went to throw and it came out of his hand. Like a hot potato. In this case, a wet, a wet one. <laughs> so fourth down and 21 now for St. Thomas Aquinas at the 30. Need to get to the nine to convert. Wet potatoes everywhere. St. Thomas Aquinas, 4 of 12 on fourth down coming into tonight. Back to pass, Kenny. Hit as he throws. Far side. And was it picked off? That's the question. Abraham's got his hands on it, and he does. Jonathan Abraham's came close a couple of times earlier tonight and finally comes through with the interception, the first of his career. Super happy for John. Great play there. Um, you know, maybe knock it down and get 20 extra yards the other way, but... I'm always happy when, you know, one of my guys gets an interception, so. I was going to say, in a 36 to nothing game, I think some exceptions can be made in order to knock one uh, piece off the career mantle. And Jonathan Abrahams and a night, so many different players have picked up career firsts. Fitting that he picks up his first career pick today, considering the way he has played in the defensive secondary the last three weeks. He's going to get some extra cookies for that. Our defensive backs coach brings cookies, and if you get a turnover, you get to, you know, get some extra cookies. So, Mike Lynch, big fan of cookies. Is it more chocolate chip oatmeal raisin, or is it a choice per each player? It's a pretty big variety. And Seth Brown on the play fake ends up being sacked back near the Army 11-yard line. So a big loss on first down. Now will be second down for the Black Knights, but a penalty called against St. Thomas Aquinas, so erase that sack. <laughs> there have been so many penalties, it's almost been hard to keep track at times. After every play, I'm looking, surveying the field to see if there's one laying there. I didn't even see the Yankee come out that time. I just saw the official make the call. So... It'll be first and five for Army at the 24. Connors motions out of the backfield. Brown fakes the pass, keeps it, makes one man miss. Power is forward beyond the 30. And a good gain uh, for the Black Knights out by the 33-yard line should be enough for an Army first down. Yeah, Brown's super dangerous in the run game. One of the most famous highlight tapes coming out of Alabama in high school. And if you get him in space, he can make you pay. And set the Alabama high school record. For all purpose, yards in a season had over 5,000 at St. John Paul II Catholic. And the handoff up the middle to Ryan Connors, who moves the pile forward. Great to see on senior night, Michael LaRosa 
on the backup offensive line and get a chance to play here at Shea Stadium, at least one last time during uh, the regular season. Army West Point, regardless of who plays, will be hosting the league championship on November the 12th. We'll have the coverage for you right here on night vision from YouTube as Connors up the middle. Minimal gain, if any. Stack starting to get a lot of defensive linemen in the backfield. Um, you know, that second team line hasn't played against a good defensive line in a while, and um, they're getting baptized in fire right now. A lot of really talented players on this stack defense, including Danelle White and John Perry, two of the top six players in the league in tackles as a whistle on the snap. It'll be a false start against Army. And that'll back them up third down and 14 at their own 28 yard line. And I think that false start was honestly created by Stack's effectiveness so far in these two drives. Army, with their second team uh, offensive line uh, on the field right now. Deegan Reveille set up now as the uh, left tackle. Deloitte in motion across the formation left to right. Brown in shotgun. Takes the snap. Steps back. Fires it deep down the left side. He's got a man and it's incomplete. Great recovery on the back end of that play by St. Thomas Aquinas. Gabriel Ufola Jawanlo coming up uh, with the deflection there. Looked like Matthew McGettigan broke free down the near sideline. Yeah, it's honestly a pretty good ball by Seth. Um, just a better play by the defensive back there to, you know, get an outstretched, outstretched arm on it. Ofola Juwanlo out of Providence, Rhode Island. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that last name correctly. Shout out Brad Sarno and the St. Thomas Aquinas Sports Information Department for getting us the pronunciations. Hopefully doing right by our opponents from St. Thomas Aquinas tonight, at least in getting their names right, as this one will be down inside uh, the Army 30-yard line. Another outstanding punt by Alex Pirine, who's had a really uh, understated but outstanding game so far today in terms of what Army's been able to do special teams. He's actually the first actual punter we've had since I've been here. My plea bureau, we had a receiver punt. In the last two years, we had a combination of an offensive lineman and a quarterback punt. And to actually have a punter, I mean, he's staring at an all-league selection right now. I was going to say, when you have a guy like that, where he's not a two-way player, he's not playing multiple positions, that's what he does, and that's what he does well. It's got to be almost like a, a cheat code in the CSFL to have somebody who has that skill set and does it so well. For sure. So St. Thomas Aquinas will take over at their own 24-yard line. Ryan Kenny, a high snap, handoff uh, to the near side, uh, trying to get back to the middle, look to be Solero, the ball carrier. No, actually it was Bo Maroney. Uh, not much doing for the Spartans on first down as the Black Knight second team defense taking over on the second drive for St. Thomas Aquinas. Rain beginning to pick back up again. Senior Dylan Dennis on the field now as well for the Black Knights with this second unit. So I make a great tackle on special teams already today. Another penalty. Have to be another penalty on that last play. And it's going to be against St. Thomas Aquinas. So they're backed up even further behind the sticks. First down at 15. A little bit of an errant snap, but able to be hauled in by Kenny to his left. And a handoff up the middle for Solero. Not much doing there. Yeah, there. And it'll be second down. Hasn't been much doing all night in the run game. Just a testament, to, uh, and these are the twos now for Army D, but just a testament to the depth and the passion that they play with. I was going to say, it's got to feel maddening as a team, but you've got to establish certain parts of your offense as another jump at the line of scrimmage. Both teams with players moving. We'll find out who committed the infraction first. 
This is standard parent-teacher conference in the middle of the field here. Um, the guard moved first, but I guess it's hard to see. You definitely saw it on your screen there. Jeremy Shucker was the man who moved first. And once again, we talked about it. Stack is not helping themselves out. They're shooting themselves in the foot with the penalties. And it looks like... Did they call it on Army? I wasn't sure. It looked like they did call it on Army, and then I think they changed their mind. <laughs> <laughs> Which... Now everybody even more confused. As uh, so now the officials going uh, to have another powwow to figure out, I guess, either A, who the penalty was on, and B, where the ball should be placed. Maybe they're calling the game. Uh, it's getting pretty wet out there, and I'm sure they're hungry. What I'm gonna say is, the, do they have a tarp team here, <laughs> here at Shea Stadium? Do they do they pull tarp here, like they make me do during the minor league baseball season? And I do call the penalty against Army. I missed that one. Oh, at this point, I think on both sides, let's just make a decision. Yeah. As the weather continuing to. Not improve in any form or fashion. No. As we reach four minutes to go in this third quarter. Great day, though, if you've invested in umbrellas. Bobbled snap and is taken by Kenny as he runs for his life towards the far sideline and is pushed out, out of bounds there. And it'll be third down and long upcoming for St. Thomas Aquinas. Honestly, I feel like that's been the, one of the bigger parts of where we've seen the weather come into play today. A lot of muffed and fumbled snaps on both sides. Yeah, I've never seen that this many muffed snaps before, and it affects not only the timing of the mesh, but also timing with routes and obviously potential fumbles. So third down and long. With three and a half to go in the quarter, Army, the only points after the locker room at halftime, a 36 to nothing lead. Back to pass, Kenny. Dumps it out near side of screen. Got his man, and the ball's out on the floor. Who's got it? Here's a mass collection of bodies out near the 35 yard line and it looks like St. Thomas Aquinas jumped on their own fumble. Second time they've done that here in the half. Looked like Evan Sawyer came in and knocked, put his helmet around the ball. That's two weeks in a row. He has a forced fumble. Not too shabby for the sophomore from Marshville, North Carolina. And a big game against Mansfield and the first game of his career earlier this season. And the Spartans able to move the chains there. And they'll have first and 10 at their own 34-yard line. Single receiver near side, that is Jones. They take the snap, handoff Solero off tackle left, trying to get to the far side. And it is spun out of bounds, maybe just shy of the 40. Yeah, I think that's the first two backs that we've seen from Stack tonight. I don't recognize them being in that. I wonder if they're going to start committing more and more to the run with the weather. And it seems like they've also been without two key players on offense. Normally you see for 24, Reno Molina, who came into play today, top 10 of the league in rushing yards, as well as Jaden Bennerman out wide as a wide receiver. Neither have been seen on the field, number eight and uh, number 24 in white and maroon for the Spartans today. Two players would have been greatly needed amidst this sloppy game in terms of weather. See the quarterback Kenny there run in and try and push the pile. Spear the back of the pile. It's not usually a recommended course of action for a quarterback, but. You know, no. 36 nothing, minute to go in the third quarter. Potentially some frustrations. Might, and might as well. Uh, do anything you can to try and move that pile. And so, <laughs> until you get an unsportsmanlike conduct. I was going to say that or hurt. Yeah. It's uh, not something that either side needs to see. And a 36 point game with 16 minutes left to go in this contest amidst a rainstorm. 
Two receivers out to the near side. Army sags off defensively back to pass. Kenny, and he goes down again. Swimming for yet another sack, it's James Windsor. Yeah, due to the sort of lack of depth at the defensive line due to injuries, Windsor gets to stay on the field all game, and that's the guy that absolutely loves it, as you see here. And say Robert Bragg's out for the year. Suffered an injury in practice prior to the Navy game in Windsor. Doesn't matter what the score is or what the weather is, he's having a ball out there. It's unfortunate this game's not being played on grass. <laughs> I was gonna say that would have made for some great, great photo, video, and grass stains on that black and gold Army jersey. That brings us to the end of the third quarter. Army continuing to impress. They continue to shut out State Thomas Aquinas after three here at Shea Stadium. Army West Point 36, St. Thomas Aquinas nothing. Back with more sprint football on Night Vision from YouTube. So the fourth quarter about to get underway with St. Thomas Aquinas set to punt. Looked like they were considering a fake there at the last second. Sammy decides to put it away. Taken on a hop by Deloitte. Looked like he might have some room to move, but then is immediately speared at about the Army 40-yard line. So the Black Knights will uh, take over their first drive uh, of uh, the fourth quarter. And uh, Caleb... It has been a dominant performance uh, from the Black Knights over these first 45 minutes of action. What do you want to see from Army during these final 15 minutes of the home regular season schedule? Just clean execution. Uh, not a lot of penalties and, you know, unforced errors. Just clean football. Made the first man hit the deck, but a good tackle on the second effort by Elio Nexus Lopez. Leo Burns got hurt on that first play. Running for his life along the near side, Seth Brown may be able to move that line of scrimmage a couple of yards or so. It'll be second down upcoming for Army. Ended up being no gain. Yeah, this, around this time five years ago, we had rain like this, one of my high school games, and if you made a tackle or fell down, you could legitimately slide for around 15 yards in the dirt and the mud. <laughs> I'm going to say some of the best the football games, some of the best videos I've seen from football games have come from games in the grass where the conditions are just like this as Connors catches a swing pass along the near sideline. In terms of weather, which game had worse weather? This one or the game, uh, was it against Mansfield or Caldwell, Caldwell that ended up 4-2 to two earlier in your career? Absolutely Caldwell. <laughs> I was going to say, the game ended 4-2, to two, it had to be that yeah, one. Th this is child's play compared to Caldwell. You look back in that game in your career as Brown back to pass, fires it deep over the middle, and he's got his man. A oh, diving catch by Kaysen Mackey, the Texas kid, just shy of the stack 30. How about that throw? Away from the safety over the top, Mackey turns back into it. Great catch, too. Great ball by Seth. And some of the worst rain we've seen throughout the course of this game as well. And Brown, uh, a seed. Over the middle in between two defenders to Kaysen Mackey, who had one of the best games of his career last week against Cornell. Nine catches for 75 yards. Brown keeping it, running right, and is shoved down. Great tackle by Raul Ramirez. And the Army yeah. bench didn't seem to like the posturing after the play. No, it's just a general lack of self-awareness when you're down by 40 in the fourth quarter and you haven't moved the ball past midfield. Typically, that's not suggested, but... That's just how I view it, I guess. Well, everyone's got their own different way to try and hype themselves up. 
And for Ramirez, that was how he chose to go about it. Brown rolling left, finds Deloitte inside the 30, able to stay upright and move the chains, or rather not move the chains, but get out past the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second down. Rather third down and 10, or third and eight, excuse me, upcoming for Army. But yeah, while it may stink for the people in the stands or stand on the sideline, these are the type of games you want to play in. What's your favorite part about playing in games like this where the weather is just absolutely disgusting? You know, as a defensive guy, I naturally have a take more of a liking to it, but I, I think it's just fun. Everyone's out there just sucking together, and there's nothing you can do. Like, you just have to get into it, and... Uh, Especially on grass, though, that's the best. And, you know, you can create this type of weather whenever you want if you leave the sprinklers on overnight. <laughs> Something out of Bull Durham. Yeah, or my, my high school. I, I'm not going to confirm or deny, but there were a few games when the grass was a little bit too wet for 75 and sunny. But Hey, your secret's safe with me. <laughs> Fourth down and eight for Army at the stack 29. They're going to go for it. Brown steps up in the pocket, has some room to run, and is able to sprawl himself forward. Should be enough for a first down, and it is inside the stack 20-yard line. Great scamper from the Alabama kid. Yeah, and a great in and out cut right there on number three. Looks like an outside linebacker and, you know, falling forward for the first down. First and 10, Army. Inside the stack 20, 11 and a half minutes to go as the rain continues to increase. Brown, handoff up the middle, and a small gain on the first play of uh, that set of downs. It'll be second and long upcoming uh, for the Black Knights, but senior night festivities here at Army alongside one of the players honored pregame today. That is Caleb Self. Long-time safety here with the Army Sprint Football Program. And one of the my favorite things about senior night, particularly with uh, West Point and so many different teams, is Brown takes the snap, flings it out near side, looking for Connors on a screen. No gain, maybe a loss of one on the play. It's third down. But I always love that senior night. They honor the uh, student managers, the players that maybe are hurt and don't play anymore, or players that left the team still involved some way or fashion. For you, working with the many different student managers and things like that, how important are they to what you guys are able to do week in and week out as a player? Uh, it's essential, you know, food, water, towels. Um, you know, there's managers and there's cadet coaches, and they're two, they're two separate things, but, you know, specifically the managers, they take care of all the logistical things that are required to, you know, play a football game or host a football game. So um, they're very much appreciated on, on this team. So uh, last play, it'll be very close to the first down marker, and after uh, a measurement, it will be first down and goal. Beautiful feed from Brown to Connors over the middle, little slant pattern there. So first down and goal for Army. Ball at the nine. A little bit of a slippery snap, but Brown is slippery as well and able to avoid a loss and able to jackknife forward for a gain of about one. But you're one of the cadet coaches as a part of the program uh, this year. Who are some of the other cadet coaches that you've been working with this season? And what's it like that even though, unfortunately, injuries halted your career shorter than you would have liked, that you are still such a vibrant and vital part of what this program is doing. Uh, so some of the guy, other guys I work with, uh, Justin Fitzgerald looks like, yeah, Justin Fitzgerald, um, Caleb Irwin, they're both on the offensive side of the ball. George White on the defense side of the ball, he's a cow. Um, but yeah, I, I knew I wasn't gonna play around. Um, it's a holding call against Army there on second down. And I'll back him up. Nine minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. I would say around March of last year, probably, the concussion symptoms just weren't really going away. But I know I wanted to stay with the team for how much Sprint has given me, even getting into the academy uh, as I was recruited. So I definitely owe the team a lot. And uh, we talked about drive and relatedness as it pertains to, you know, the rest of the season. And you keep coming out for the guys you play with, not necessarily for, you know, the final score. So it's a special moment to be able to share those 
times in the trenches with your teammates, whether on the field or off. Brown looking for somebody, rolling out near his side. He's got Mackey, but it's off his hands, incomplete. A slippery football creating problems as it rolls onto the track. And only third and long upcoming for Army. Yeah, going back to the video game analogy we used earlier, I mean, he's <laughs> he's standing in the back in the pocket for seemed like 10 seconds, just juking everybody out and extending the play. Great ball, and it's just tough to catch right now, <laughs> especially with your hands. Mackey, the old school approach, no gloves. And plenty of bodies jostling at the line of scrimmage. We'll see which side jump first. Looks to be against the Spartans. On the offside against St. Thomas Aquinas, and that'll move it forward five yards. So it'll be third down and goal from the 13 upcoming. And it's still looking ahead for both these sides. Army will close out the regular season against Caldwell Saturday, November the 4th. So that is not next weekend, but the weekend following. As Brown fakes the pitch, keeps it himself up the middle inside the 10-yard line and is thrust down there by Davion Hicks. So it'll be fourth down and goal for Army at about the seven. And in a 36 to nothing game, no need to try and tack on extra points through the field goal game to leave the offense on the field. Yeah, honestly, really good drive uh, by the second offense here. Honestly, you have to give a lot of credit and bounce back from the second team offense. Their first play on the field was a fumble recovered inside the 20 yard line by Stack. And since then they have buoyed themselves nicely. Fourth and goal from the seven. They hand it off Connor's far side looking for a block and he's in for a touchdown. The native of Maine on senior night with the exclamation point and with seven to 38 to go in the fourth quarter, Army leads 42 to nothing. Yeah, toss play to Connors and he just has a convoy of blockers ahead of him all the way to the end zone essentially and it's a free run, great play. Wonderful to see the senior get into the end zone on senior night. And helped out on the handoff by his fellow first E Seth Brown, who helped orchestrate that touchdown drive. We be Ryan uh, for the extra point. Tilly to hold. And the PAT is up and good to give Army a 43 to nothing lead. The third time in five games this year, Army has put up 40 or more and make it now 106 to nothing for Army the last seven and a half quarters. 63 to nothing last week against Cornell. 43 to nothing here with 7.38 to go against St. Thomas Aquinas. You look at these last two weeks, where does that rank for you, Kelvin, your time here at Army, and this consistency from one week to the next in terms of just sheer dominance? I think this is the best the team's ever been. Obviously, the win over Navy at home, 10 to 3, that's the least amount of points we've given up against Navy since I was a plebe. And then just to, you know, tack on that after that win with two essentially dismantling the other squad is it's huge for the confidence and huge for um, just how you play. I was going to say it's got to be such a great feeling as a first D as seniors beating Navy for the first time since plebe year as Sammy who's been on punt duties most of the day trying to run away from the Army special teams unit but uh, excellent coverage down the field Mason Barriolt on the tackle there, and St. Thomas Aquinas will start their drive with 7.28 to go in this fourth quarter, but to not only win that game against Navy, but to continually get better afterwards, it's gotta be such an incredible feeling of, of confidence, not only within yourself, but in what everybody on the team is doing. Yeah, it's all about the process. The games are just, you know, the output of the inputs that you apply every single day. And so the process is what makes it important. And when you have a solid process that you stick to every day, this is, these are the results that you get. That's a large part of what's instilled in so many different cadets at the U.S. Military Academy. And that's something the sprint football team, as Caleb said, has done beautifully. Fumbled pitch to Solero, and he just falls on top of it as Bryce, DG, and Cinto comes up with the tackle for loss. Another senior from Piedmont, Oklahoma. 
Yeah, it's getting so bad out there, and they're down by so much. They're struggling to run, you know, just basic toss plays. It's so wet. And it just seems like with each passing second, the rainfall continues to increase in terms of its heft. Hand off to Solero trying to run out near side, and a plethora of black shirts make the stop. J.C. Romo, one of the players there to make the tackle. Alongside Stryker Gay, and it'll be third down and long upcoming from the St. Thomas Aquinas nine-yard line. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious as to see if they're going to throw a pass here and try to get some points on the board. That's what I would expect. But, you know, at this point, six minutes to go, down by 43, maybe just run and try to convert that way. And this game been a far outlier from the first four for St. Thomas Aquinas this season. Nearly upset Navy in week one as that pass far side falls incomplete. Striker Gay on the coverage again. And it'll be fourth down and long upcoming uh, for the Spartans. And they'll most likely punt it away again with six minutes left to go. You know, there were some rumors of some, some bolts and board material this week for the Black Knights. I, I think there may have been some some talk over the airwaves about, you know, Stack was going to come in here and put it on us. But, yeah, you know, the, the last thing you want to do is give another team something personal, and it didn't work out in <laughs> Stack's favor. You can say they played extremely well against Navy the first week. Beat Caldwell on the road, 25-18. to 18. Had their own version of a dismantling against Chestnut Hill. Put up 46 against them before losing a nail-biter last week on the road in Philly uh, to Penn. They still have got two more games left on the schedule. They'll be at home next week against Mansfield at 7 o'clock for their final home game of the regular season. Then they'll close out the regular season at Cornell on Friday the 3rd of November. That's a nubbing kick, and Deloitte will just let it roll. Takes a St. Thomas Aquinas bounce out inside of the stack 40-yard line. Or rather, inside the Army 40-yard line. That's where the Black Knights will take over, and it looks like it might be the end of the day for Seth Brown. Saw Kyle West beginning to run towards the huddle. Army's third-string quarterback, the freshman. But if that is... The end of the day uh, for Seth Brown. Have to be really impressed with the job he did considering the conditions and the way the day started for him on offense with that fumble on the first play. Yeah, the ability to, you know, when you're playing with wet balls, be able to throw them down the field as effective as he did and um, run really well as well is just super impressive. So here is Kyle West to take over at quarterback. His older brother, Keegan, a former offensive player of the year in this league. His dad, Mark, the head coach, of course. And he'll take over under center at his first two touchdown passes of his career last week. As they will hand off up the middle, look to be DeAndre Brunings on the handoff there. And the California native of the middle for a short gain on first down. Yeah, this Army wants to make this their last drive. Ideally, you drive all the way down and then either score or take a knee within the 10. Army in no hurry to snap the ball on offense until they absolutely need to. West takes the snap. They hand off Brunings up the middle. He gets table topped out by the 40-45-yard line. But a good chunk game there for Brunings, who hasn't had a lot of carries on offense this year, just his 13th and 14th of the season. Well, a couple of nice plays, and it'll be third and five. I guess I just noticed this. I don't, I don't see the play clock anywhere. Um, I was going to say, I, I did not see the play clock illuminated during the first half, and I can only imagine there's some sort of technical issue, and I would imagine the officials are keeping it manually as a handoff to Bruning's ball squirts out and heads up play by Kyle West to get on top of that football to prevent a turnover. And Army, unfortunately, will have to punt it away. A three and out, probably for the first time today. A good job by St. Thomas Aquinas. They just put a hat on that football. Yeah, you know, textbook tackle there, helmet on the ball. And that was a nice play by Kyle West because, you know, the shutout means a lot to the Army defense. And especially when you consider the fact that the team's only given up one touchdown all year. P. Ryan will punt it away, and he lets this one fly. 
Fair catch called for and taken at the 25 yard line by Gabriel Ofola Juanlo. And so the Spartans will take over here. First down and 10. And I think they have maybe made a call to the bullpen in terms of their quarterback here. As with 3.59 to play, I don't see number 10, Ryan Kenny, on the field. It'll be Andrew Rain, fittingly, to take <laughs> over under center. He can't make it up. A uh, freshman from Fallsburg, New York. And he will keep it on the ground up the middle and right into the Army defensive line where they make the stop. Look to be Thomas Golio and Rex Taysom who made the stop and talking with Coach West earlier this week. Those are two guys he mentioned that really had big impacts last weekend in Cornell in the second half. Yeah, you know, when you get your chance to play, you want to prove yourself not only to the team, but uh, to you as an individual football player. And, you know, that's what's so great about the Army defense is guys are hungry, and no matter what, they're going to bust it. Rain in shotgun. Maroney behind him. Takes the snap, Maroney fumbles the ball, it's down on the turf. Who's got it? Army saying they've recovered, and they did. Army forces yet another turnover, and with 312 to go, they've got the ball in St. Thomas Aquinas territory, and now, Caleb, might be the time for them to be able to put the finishing touches and run out the clock. Yeah, you'd hope so. 312 left to go. Um, and, you know, that kind of that play kind of sums up Stacks Knight. Uh, it never really got anything going, even f after a return past midfield to start the game. And um, kind of sums up Army's night for getting the ball out, picking it off, and making stuff happen. You say never a great feeling to have your best play of the game be the first play of the game. But Army has done that by imposing their will tonight. And credit goes to the Black Knights and being able to execute and impose their will. They'll hand it off to J.P. Ross across the formation to the near side. And knees brought down rather quickly. Christopher Jones, the linebacker, on the stop. Ross had a lot of playing time last week against Cornell at 10 carries for 31 yards. The longest extended time he saw so far in his young college career. Yeah, a great kid at my lunch table. You know, always tries to get more bread for us. So super appreciative of that guy. I'm going to say, you need that bulldog mindset in order to secure that extra bread and secure those extra yards. Still staying upright. He gave a lick to somebody in maroon and white. And J.P. Ross, the freshman from Harvest, Alabama, attended the same high school as Seth Brown. A big run there. And a first down for Army at the 13. Just tough, tough run in there, and that's that's exactly what you want, especially in this weather. Not bad for your fourth or fifth string running back. Ross will toss play near side, a flag thrown at the end of the play. Ross got back maybe to the line of scrimmage. But flag thrown in the area of holding with 2.08 to go. Still waiting on the call. It is indeed holding against the Black Knights. And that will back them up here with just a bit over two minutes uh, left to go here on this senior night. Get the rain lined up a little bit. Third down at the 17 yard line. And to get to. It appears to be the 14 to convert. Screen pass near side. Okasik makes a man miss inside the 10 at the 5, diving towards the pylon and down about a yard or two shy of the goal line. Kelton Okasik had a couple of catches last week. First two of his career and nearly darted his way into the end zone for his first career touchdown. Yeah, just electric after the catch there. Um, shut off a few tacklers and even made an effort to reach the pile on there, it came up just short. A first and goal for Army at the four, trying to put one final dagger onto the scoreboard. West takes the snap, handoff Ross up the middle, trying to lower his shoulders and push the bodies forward. On a good stop on the defensive line by Esmond Oldham's 
and Brandon Jimenez. And it'll be second down and goal with a minute to go. And I yeah. guess here, maybe one more play from scrimmage. Who knows, maybe they'll try to score. Anything's possible. Trying to get somebody in maybe for their first career touchdown. West fakes the handoff, looking to keep it himself, lowers his shoulder, and doesn't gain much of anything. Actually loses three or four yards on the play, but will get some love from his teammates for lowering that right shoulder into a defender. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, I have a feeling that's going to end up as a, as a big a talking point in film session this week for no other reason than giving Kyle the business. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you, you said it. <laughs> maybe he'll put that on his Instagram or something. Lower the shoulder into Tyler Saman. And with 12 seconds to go, Army is set up in the victory formation. I don't even think they really need to snap it. And they won't even bother doing so. That will do it. Army West Point pitches a shutout on senior night. Your final score this evening at Shea Stadium. The Army West Point Black Knights 43 and the St. Thomas Aquinas College Spartans nothing. Army West Point the last two weeks have outscored their opponents 106 to nothing after their star victory against Navy two weeks ago. Caleb couldn't have doctored up a better senior night if we scripted it after the Navy game. Now, just great all-around game by all three phases. Even had a special teams touchdown, which is pretty sweet. Um, and, you know, came out in this weather, not pretty. Uh, but what's pretty was, you know, the execution, and that's what's important. Although with senior night tonight here at West Point, with one more game in the regular season to go, one more win to clinch these Black Knight seniors, one more home game, and that would be for the chance at a CSFL championship to close out their careers. What a performance tonight, start to finish from the Black Knights. Caleb, it's your senior night as well. Anything you want to say to the people at home that have been watching you play over these last four years? I mean, just the support you guys have received from the sprint football team and what playing for this team means to you yeah it means everything it's uh the most important thing about being here you know it means more to me than academics or you know whatever else hopefully my my tack didn't hear that but <laughs> my family's in here in the booth uh which is pretty cool and you know i think my fiance is listening listening in kansas so uh yeah, everybody's tuning in, and, you know, thanks for having me on again. Our absolute pleasure, Caleb. Thank you so much for joining us. We wish you were down there on the field, but a marvelous performance uh, by you here in the booth <laughs> and a marvelous performance by uh, Caleb's teammates as well as Army West Point knocks off St. Thomas Aquinas by a final score of uh, 43 to uh, nothing. So that'll just about do it for us here on uh, this Friday night for our outstanding producer, Ryan Penny, our graphics operator, Amaya McDonald, three play operator, Zach Neubauer, our camera operators, Ryan Loeffler, Mike Coletti, and Andrew Van Cura. Alongside my partner, Caleb Self, I'm Justin Rock. But before we say goodbye, we'll send it down to the field for a senior night playing of the West Point alma mater.
Shea Stadium for my partner, Caleb Self. I'm Justin Rock saying so long and good night from West Point. Army defeats St. Thomas Aquinas 43 to nothing. Our next broadcast will be the CSFL Championship game on Sunday, November 12th, 1 o'clock here on Night Vision from YouTube. For Caleb, I'm Justin. So long, good night from West Point. Army, a shutout on senior night.